is up you guys this is Steffi aka in my humble opinion and welcome back to another video in today's video we are continuing on our crown season 5 journey and we're gonna be watching season 5 episode 6 of the crown and the episode is entitled Ipative House don't know if I pronounced that right but we're gonna find out in a bit so let's get into the episode London, 1917. Okay. Queen Elizabeth. Oh, oh my God, a period. <laughs> Love that. The government is willing to send a ship to bring the Romanovs to safety here in England. Shall I go back with a yes? Show it to your mother. Ipatev House. Okay, Russia. I think they get shot here, don't they? Oh my God, I'm scared. I don't... <laughs> Yeah, I think they- oh my god, I'm probably like sound and look like such an idiot right now. I'm sorry, I don't remember what I learned in history class many, many years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I assumed it was gonna go that way considering that they were cutting to them like hunting. I didn't think they were gonna actually show this though. I thought it was just gonna be a little bit more... Wow, they, they really showed them getting shot. There's always a lot of like hunting analogies and metaphors in the crown. God, that was kind of gory. That was pretty gory, pretty violent for the crown to show. There are scenes of extraordinary drama here in Moscow tonight. Scenes of so I'm pretty sure the reason why they showed that was to set up the context as to the relationship between the UK and Russia. But I thought you had spent several days in his company. I did. He can't have been drunk all that time. I think he might have been. <laughs> He's straightforward and likable. And it turns out. What a lively shinding. Flight to Munich, then to Hamburg for a Duke of Edinburgh award ceremony, followed by a World Wildlife Fund event in Brazil, then Alaska, Canada, then back to London. That's a lot. Colors of the world. We're different that way. Yes. More and more different. Oh. See you in three weeks. Yes. <laughs> Philip's like, I am out of here. Bye bye. To watch him compete at the Cannon Ground, which is an easy course. Oh, yes. And you guys were telling me that their relationship is, well, it's interesting because some of you were like, oh no, this was definitely like a platonic relationship. And then there were other people that were like, no. It's kind of like an open secret that they had a thing. So um, I'm just gonna tell myself that it was platonic because I don't, I don't, I, I don't want to think about that. So. Guten Tag, Humboldt. <laughs> He's very proud of himself for that one, wasn't he? There are decades where nothing happens. There are weeks where decades happen. It's <laughs> a good quote. It turns out that as a younger man, he was a regional official in the Urals. First secretary of the party committee in Svedlovsk Oblast, which is where Ipatiev House. Ipatiev. Okay, so I'm assuming unless maybe they, they did clarify this, I'm sorry, but Ipatiev House, that was the safe house that the Romanovs were staying in, right? And then that's where they got shot, got killed. Zadobrya so the good tsarist times. Uh oh, maybe she wasn't supposed to say that. I have a request. That you would come to Moscow on a state visit. <laughs> I like how all of her advisors look a little stressed, a little tentative. 
I understand you personally gave the order for that house to be demolished, an act of great disrespect to my family's memory. <laughs> The Romanovs deserve a decent burial. Again, I may sound like an idiot saying this, but it seems like her grandfather's mother had a major influence in not attaining the Romanovs. Am I wrong or correct in saying that? Earlier, when they had the letter and they were like, show your mother, what does she think? It seems like she didn't really act on the offer. It's always interesting to me when you hear people kind of like shit on Buckingham Palace. And I feel like part of the reason why they, they do that is to kind of like make themselves feel better and say like, oh, this is supposed to be like Buckingham Palace, but I've seen better. But it's like, so what? Like, who cares? <laughs> I mean, that building has been there for like a very long time, so I don't know. It's just interesting when people say that or they do that. I feel like that just says more about them than it does about like the actual Buckingham Palace. Your Royal Highness. The Queen? In with the Prime Minister. Let her know I'm back, will you? Sir? His, he's back from his Colors of the World trip. Skulls smashed in by rifle butts, bullets embedded in temples. Oh. And it turns out the best, the only place in the world for bone DNA sequencing is here in England. Aldermaston, yes. Mm. Wow. Oh no. <laughs> only use a particular kind of DNA that passes through the maternal line. Mitochondrial. Oh, you knew that? Yes. How? These like, oh, I wouldn't say like everyday conversations because I'm sure not the average husband and wife are talking about <laughs> this, but I like these like everyday interactions between Elizabeth and Philip. It's just like funny to see their dynamic. Hair, blood, saliva? Didn't you ask? No. <laughs> they took a sample of my blood, which they vacuum sealed in a plastic bag. Then they have to extract it. Yes, see, I did draw it there. He's like, she'll understand. She'll know what I mean. We're used to looking at genetic predisposition for diseases. But what about behavior? Our decisions? Do we really have any choice at all? Is any of it really an accident? Philip looks inspired by her monologue right now. You guys better be right that that is a platonic relationship and not something more. Connecting with his own past. What's the song from Anastasia? Dancing. Wait, dancing bears, painted wings. Ugh, whatever. Whatever the, the lyrics are to that song, a classic. Well, the uncovering of the Romanov remains seems to have reawakened a fascination. Romanov. Very interesting the way you Brits pronounce uh, Romanovs. We pronounce it Romanov here in America. Well, technically I'm not in America right now, but you get the point. He's been reading book after book. Really? Yes, connecting with his orthodox roots. God help us. So basically, Philip is giving himself his own episode of Who Do You Think You Are? This Russian trip feels like a shared adventure, a shared passion. We have so few shared interests these days. Mm. What did the window cleaner see in the Kremlin? Oh my gosh, not knock-knock jokes. Nothing. That's the trouble with iron curtains. Wow, that is like amazing how they like recreate the scope on the crown. It's just money. Wow, so like in the UK, do you guys now say God save the king instead of God save the queen? Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Damn, we're all gonna be dead before the next time they sing God save the queen ties of kinship became frozen into a decades long winter. But isn't that like low-key because of her great grandma? I mean one of the many reasons probably but oh, no. 
<laughs> now of all times. And reminding myself not only how much I gained, but how much I gave up when I married you. Oh, uh oh. How else are we different? Oh, after 47 years of marriage, we might ask ourselves, how are we still alike? Ooh, burn. They're fighting again. They're fighting again. Wish this DNA business had never happened. My disenchantment long predates that. Oh, Philip. Oh. Ew. <laughs> oh, who's right? Look at the distance between the two. Camera blocking. Well, I've had to seek companionship elsewhere. Companionship. Intellectual companionship. Spiritual companionship. <laughs> Oh, Lord. Well, in essence, it's a group of us. A gang. A community of friends. She's like, are you engaging in an orgy? Your godson's wife. Friendship, Lilibet. She's half your age. <sighs> oh, see? Look at that. Look at that. You people in the comment section that were like kind of shading me being like, oh no, 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 that definitely platonic. And then some of you who were like acting as if me not knowing the relationship between Philip and this Penny, I was like a freaking idiot. Maybe if they would have had a little bit of this dialogue as to how Penny was even related to Philip earlier in the season, I would have not looked like such an idiot. It would have been nice to know the context instead of this like random blonde lady that he was suddenly talking to. I digress, but I, I feel validated by Elizabeth's concern right now. It compromises me. Me, as your soulmate. Oh, Elizabeth. And if I ask you to end your companionship. That would be a mistake. <laughs> He's so calm about it. That would be a mistake. I'd like you to befriend Penny. I'd like you to be seen with Penny. You're asking me to legitimize your... Companionship. And tell me, what would I learn? How the Romanovs really met their death. We already know that. They were slaughtered by the Bolsheviks. Oh, well. oh Elizabeth is going to learn the truth of her grand great-grandmommy. It's interesting that even in their older age, they still have disagreements. Cause I feel like you don't really see in a lot of media, well, first of all, in media in general, it's very rare to see people of this age at the center of a story, right? But typically when you see couples of this age in media, their relationship is not really fraught. It's like by that time they've like figured it out they're good, but obviously with Elizabeth and Philip, the relationship dynamic is so complicated. So it's interesting to see that even at this time, they still butt heads every now and again. But also important to remember that Philip sticks up for Elizabeth and Elizabeth sticks up for Philip when push comes to shove, it seems. She's getting insecure with that she's aging and then she's gonna like meet this younger woman who her husband finds more intellectually stimulating than her. Lady Rumsey has arrived. No. Thank you. It's Emily, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. She's like, I'm gonna make this bitch wait. <laughs> Morning. Good morning, Your Majesty. Very hearty breakfast. It was a great deal, lad. Mm. Oh, <laughs> she's really taking her time to get to her. It's possible the motivation came from elsewhere, as suggested by one or two other accounts I read. Hmm. How many did you read? Oh, half a dozen. Good heavens. <laughs> Good heavens. Good morning, Your Majesty. She's like, Elizabeth, this is a library, and these are books. <laughs> Show it to your mother. Her judgment is unfailingly the- Oh, so that's Elizabeth's dad. Okay. I'm sorry. For some reason, I thought this other man in this scene was his brother, but that's his son. That's why I thought when he said, show it to your mother, I thought it was like he was telling his brother to show it to their mom. Apologies. Sorry. Do we send the ship? No. Osborne might come to regret it. 
you see, there was a rivalry between the two women. Hmm. But it was my clever grandmother, Mary, who Queen Victoria initially wanted the elder son of Edward VII. Yes, but only after Alexandra had first rejected him. Oh, that's an interesting theory. That's a fun theory. But how commendable of you to show such interest in and do all that reading. Elizabeth is like, I renounce your theory. I'm glad to hear of your sense of duty and of your commitment to your marriage and to a house that has been so important to me personally. Commitment to your marriage. Emphasis on that part. So why don't you come in the car with me to church this Christmas at Sandringham to nip all that in the bud? I love how she just like said that and walks walks out of the room. It's hard for her to let her emotions out because she's just literally been trained all her life to hold it in. It's in the quiet moments when she's alone that she can. Merry Christmas. Mrs. Timmy, please come and live in Buckingham Palace with me. Dang, so those rumors in the newspapers must have been, like, pretty present for the kid to say that. One of the most memorable accounts of a long successful marriage comes from Dostoevsky's wife, Anna. She and Fyodor were, she said, of contrasting character. Elizabeth's like, I'm listening. We're having nothing whatsoever in common. Hmm. We're just letting each other be. And leave it with talk. Where's it going? Where's it going? Are you ready? Come on. Come on. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is so cute. Let's go, yeah? Dogs! Dogs! Come on! Are you ready? Oh, there we go. Oh my god, I love this. Yeah, have another one. Who wants a treat? Who wants a treat? Come here. You know, some people are corgi and horses, and other people just like want to sit at a desk and read. We're into horse carriage writing all right and some post-show thoughts the direction that this episode went in in terms of it begins with the backstory of the romanovs getting killed and queen elizabeth's grandparents alleged involvement in that i didn't think it was going to be linked in any way or it was going to be analogous to the distant relationship between her and philip I will say I was very taken aback by how violent the beginning of the episode was in terms of like really showing us the Romanovs getting murdered <laughs> in that basement because I don't ever recall the crown being so graphic before so but I mean I guess they really wanted to make it explicit what happened. I know some of you guys are probably gonna say something pretty snarky in the comments about me not remembering the history of the Romanovs and royal family's alleged involvement in perhaps giving the go-ahead to not save them. But I, I found that theory to be interesting. I don't really remember if we ever learned about that theory in school, but it seems that Queen Elizabeth still stands her ground that that wasn't her grandmother's fault or her grandparents' fault. I feel like this episode, I think out of all of the previous ones in terms of performances, I think this gave Imelda Staunton the most to do. I thought her and Jonathan Price, seeing them really just be Elizabeth and Philip. I think this episode probably exhibited it the best so far because, you know, it's difficult with the crowd because there's so many different members in the family and obviously it being the 90s. You know, the people behind this show, they know that the general public, they want to see Diana and Charles, especially, you know, getting into season three onward. It's It feels like we don't spend as much time with Elizabeth or with Elizabeth and Philip, but this definitely felt like an Elizabeth and Philip centric episode. I really liked the scene where Elizabeth kind of went off into the room and she kind of stared and she's getting very emotional. She like actually started to cry. I thought that was a good moment for Imelda Staunton. I personally feel very vindicated 
in my assumptions earlier in the season or my questioning at the very least of what the nature of this relationship between Philip and Penny was. I think my favorite scene honestly in this episode was the last scene when they were showing Elizabeth playing with the corgis. I just, I found that so endearing. I know like she obviously had corgis throughout her entire life, but like for me, especially as someone who like, I was born in the 90s, my image of Queen Elizabeth or like what image I do have of her, it's very much kind of like this version of her. You know, anytime I saw like pictures or like little video clips of her with her dogs, it just like always really warmed my heart. So I love that we got to see a little bit of that towards the end of this episode. And that the, I guess the arc of this episode at the end of the day is Elizabeth and Philip just having to accept each other for who they are and let each other be even if their interests don't necessarily align and that being okay. All right, my question for you guys is, I want to know if you guys believe this, this alleged conspiracy theory, if you will, that Queen Elizabeth's grandparents had the option to save the Romanovs and that they decided not to. Do you believe in that theory? Are you more in line with like Queen Elizabeth's perspective on the matter that they didn't really have a choice? I think the theory concerning like the potential rivalry, I think that's interesting. I don't know if it's true. And I know some people might say, oh, well, you're buying into this uh, narrative of pitting two women against each other, but it's juicy. It's a juicy theory. So let me know. What are your guys' thoughts on that? All right. And that's about it for this video. If you liked it, please give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and please turn on the notification button down below so you know when a new video from me comes out and comment down below your thoughts on the episode. We have about four more. Yeah, seven, eight, nine, ten. Four more episodes. And then we're done with season five. Man, you know... I also want to say, I feel like this episode really highlighted the the pets, the animals in the royal family's lives. So like, shout out to the corgis, but also shout out to that parrot. What a little, what a nice little decoration to have on your shoulder, you know? <laughs>